Good afternoon and, and thank you for attending this webinar. My name is David Mendez. My uh, co-author is uh, Tui Le. We are both from the Department of Health Management and Policy, the School of Public Health at the University of Michigan. We are also investigators in the Center for the Assessment of Tobacco Regulations, CASTER. And today we're going to talk about an update that we conducted on the TIPSAC Mental Report of 2011. Uh, first, uh, we are, I have to go through some disclosures and uh, we have no conflict of interest to declare. The support for this study is provided by a grant from the National Institute of Health and the Food and Drug Administration. And the content, uh, the content presented in this study is solely the responsibility of uh, the authors and does not necessarily represent the official views of the NIH of the FDA or the FDA. So um, as a matter of, of background, the, the 2009 Family Smoking Prevention and Tobacco Control Act um, gave the charge uh, to the Food and Drug Administration and specifically the um, Tobacco Product Scientific Advisory Committee, uh, they, they charge to develop a report uh, and recommendations to address the issue of mental cigarettes or what would be the harm or the effects of mental cigarette in the public health of the population, okay. including, um, uh, you know, children and uh, uh, Hispanic or other rational, uh, racial and ethnic minorities and African Americans. Okay. Now, um, the, in, in 2011, after a year of study, the, the TIPSAC submitted uh, a report to the FDA with the following conclusions. Uh, the conclusions were that mental cigarettes have an adverse impact on public health in the United States, and there are no public health benefits of mental compared to non-mental cigarettes. So, um, uh, in the report also, um, the, the TIPSAC uh, made the following recommendation. Uh, to the FDA, and the recommendation was that removal of mental cigarettes from the marketplace would benefit the public health in the United States. Now, to, to this date, uh, the FDA has not taken any regulatory actions on mental cigarettes. Now, we know that in 2013, and again in 2018, the FDA um, have um, sought uh, uh, public comment, research results, and other information on the impact of mental cigarettes to uh, potentially inform regulatory actions that they could may, uh, could take on on on, c on, on mental cigarettes. Right. Now, um, the the. The issue we are going to be dealing here today is that uh, the TIPSAC conclusions and the conclusions, um, as, as I said before, is that mental, um, uh, the removal of mental cigarettes from the market would benefit public health. Uh, some of the, uh, those conclusions uh, were, um, that, that, that led to the recommendation we're supported by, by the result of a simulation study that, that was um, uh, supposed was, was uh, conducted to, to estimate the harm attributable to mental over the period 2010 to 2050. Um, and, the, uh, and it was under the, the 2010 status quo. What I mean is that in 2010, there were certain uh, uh, parameters that define the smoking trajectory in the United States, certain cessation rates and uh, initiation rate of smoking, certain mental prevalence, and so on. Now, um, if we fixed uh, in 2010 those uh, parameters, um, see, if, we, if, if we, those parameters continue into the future, uh, then is going to uh, generate 
is a trajectory of uh, um, uh, smoking and mental smoking, and then uh, that's what we we term the status quo, right? And uh, so the the idea was if that continues uh, for the next 40 years, uh, what we saw in 2010, then what would be the attributable, the, the harm um, in, in that simulation, in that scenario that could be attributable to, to mental? Um, so, okay. Now, uh, again, those uh, that simulation analysis was based on uh, population and uh, the, the, the parameters of the population specifically and mental specific parameters that existed in 2010. Now, um, over the period 2010 and 2018, uh, those parameters have changed, some of them, um, and that could reflect the new status quo. Uh, for example, the initiation rates uh, have fallen from 21.8% in 2009, which is the, the most recent figure uh, that we had available at the time the deep stack report was written, uh, to 78 in 2018. So it's a dramatic fall um, in, in initiation rate. And, uh, um, you know, similarly, the uh, smoking cessation rates have, have risen from a population average of 2.6%, which is the, the value that we used, uh, or that was used in the TIPSAC report, to 4.5% um, uh, currently. Okay. So um, the, the question is, uh, with those changes in parameters, with these changes in the status quo, and, and, uh, and also other changes in the effect uh, that, that we have better estimated of the effect of mental um, in uh, initiation and cessation, uh, w with those uh, updated parameters, are we still going to see the same level of magnitude uh, that uh, of of the harm due to mental that is re that is uh, reflected in the mental report? Now, um, the objective then of uh, this uh, study is to update the TIPSAC mental report. And, and estimate the excess smoking prevalence, the smoking initiation, mortality due to mental cigarettes for the U.S. general population and the African-American population as a target group, which is disproportionately, um, that has the disproportionately high prevalence of uh, mental smoking. And we're going to do that from 2018 to 2060 to simulate a similar time span that was used in the in the mental report. So uh, mental report was 2010 to 2050, it's about 40 years, and this is 2018 to 2060, uh, about 42 years, just to have um, some basis for comparison, right? So um, now, uh, Tui is going to talk about the modeling and the methods we use. Yeah, so thank you, David. So uh, uh, we used an uh, established mathematical model of uh, uh, smoking uh, prevalence and health effects. The model was modified to track also the methyl smokers. Uh, this is the same model that uh, was used in the deep sub methyl report. So the model was uh, simulated under two different scenarios. Uh, the status quo scenario uh, is, uh, is what uh, is likely to happen over the next 40 years. Uh, the counterfactual scenarios is the scenario in which smoking um, problems were adjusted to remove the effect of uh, menthol. Uh, the, the model problems in each scenario were kept uh, constant over the considered period. Then we repeated the analysis uh, for the um, African American population. So uh, this is the diagram of, uh, of the model. Blue boxes here represent main compartments of the model, tracking the number of uh, never smokers 
um, methyl, non-methyl current smokers, uh, former smokers, and um, uh, deaths over time. So here, uh, green and blue circles um, correspond to the model parameters, red for um, methyl specific uh, parameters and uh, green for the rest. Orange diamonds indicate uh, the events of uh, uh, individuals are becoming uh, adult methyl and adult non-methyl uh, regular smokers. The details of uh, this model can be found in the deep sac methyl report. So um, the model parameters uh, were updated using the following sources, uh, populations by age and uh, uh, projected life uh, births uh, were taken from the US Census Bureau in 2018. And uh, the overall death rates were taken from the US uh, life table in 2017. Methyl and non-methyl smoking uh, prevalence data was estimated from the 2018 National Health Interview Survey. The problem methyl cessation multiplier uh, measures uh, how likely a methyl smoker is to quit than a non-methyl smoker. The values, uh, the value of uh, this parameter was taken from a recent published work of um, uh, Mills uh, et al. in 2020. Uh, in their study, they used the data from four waves of the population assessment of uh, tobacco and health study. Their conclusion is that methyl Methyl smokers are significantly less likely to quit than non-methyl smokers. Uh, probabilities of um, switching between um, non-methyl and methyl cigarettes uh, were kept the same as uh, in the deep sac methyl report. And here the broader methyl mortality uh, multiplier measures uh, the increased risk of death for a methyl cigarette smoker compared to a non-methyl smoker. The value of uh, this parameter is um, equal to 1 since um, previous studies have found no statistically difference between methyl and uh, non-methyl smokers in uh, the mortality risk. Uh, the rel relative risk of uh, mortality of current and uh, Former smokers uh, were taken from the work of uh, Mendes and uh, his colleagues in uh, 2014. Uh, here, the ratio of yields from uh, experimental to established smoker uh, indicates how much more likely a methyl experimental is to become a regular smoker at age 18 than a non-methyl experimenter. The value of uh, this parameter was taken from uh, the work of uh, non-maker et al. in 2013 and in 2019. Based on different data, they found that prior methyl use was uh, significantly associated with uh, progression to establish smoking. And uh, uh, these two studies found the same odds ratio. The smoking-related uh, uh, death rates uh, by age were estimated from the uh, overall death rates and uh, the relative uh, risk of uh, mortality. The overall cessation rates uh, were um, derived using the estimates from the studies conducted by uh, Mendes um, at all in uh, 1998 and 2016. The cessation rate of methyl and non-methyl smokers uh, were obtained uh, using the overall cessation rates and uh, the parameter methyl cessation multiplier. Uh, to project the harm of methyl cigarettes over uh, 2018 to 2060, we uh, populated the model with um, 10, 2018 data and uh, parameters. Then first, we conducted a simulation scenario over 
2018 to 2060, keeping all parameters constant. Uh, and uh, this is the uh, status quo scenario. And then we constructed an uh, alternative uh, scenario over the same period, in which the effect of uh, methyl cigarettes was uh, removed over 2018 to 2016. And, and then we compare both uh, scenarios to quantify the public health harm attributable to methyl over um, the, the given uh, period of time uh, we are interested in. The number of uh, methyl smoking related premature deaths, the number of uh, life years lost, the number of uh, new smokers due to methyl, for each scenario, we computed the number of uh, smoking attributable deaths as the excess number of deaths due to uh, the increased uh, risk of dying for current and former smokers as uh, compared to never smokers. The cumulative difference in uh, smoking attributable deaths between status quo and counterfactual scenarios is um, an estimate of uh, premature deaths due to methylated cigarettes. The harm of methyl in cigarettes is also quantified by cumulative uh, number of um, uh, life years lost and uh, cumulative new smokers uh, due to uh, methyl. Here we consider two different scenarios, the status quo scenario and the counterfactual scenario. Um, in, in the status quo scenario, the smoking initiation rate was taken as uh, the smoking rate among 18 to 24 years old, uh, year olds in um, uh, 2018 and HIS. In this scenario, there are methyl and non-methyl smokers. Uh, previous studies have shown that the odds of uh, becoming a regular smoker are higher among uh, methyl uh, mental experimenters. Therefore, under counterfactual scenario, when the effect of methyl was removed, uh, the smoking initiation rate would be lower. The smoking initiation rate in this case uh, is computed using this formula. Uh, here, gamma is the uh, smoking initiation rate under uh, status quo scenario. Uh, we uh, we use also the proportion of uh, methyl um, experimenters and uh, the ratio of yields uh, from experimenter to smoker. Uh, remember that uh, this parameter indicates how much more likely a methyl experimenter to is to become uh, a regular smoker than a non-methyl uh, experimenter. Uh, here are the, the the values of uh, methyl related parameters uh, for the general US population. This one, uh, these values uh, were used in the deep sub methyl report, and uh, uh, these are um, uh, in our current uh, study. So we updated the ratio of use from experimenter to smoker uh, and also um, methyl association multiplier. So this value uh, was taken from the work of uh, non-maker in uh, 2019 and um, uh, the value of uh, methyl situation multiplier was uh, from a recent published article in the, um, uh, nicotine and uh, tobacco research. And here are the values of um, uh, uh, the value for the African-American population. Uh, methyl situation multipliers for the general U.S. population and uh, for the um, African-American population were taken from the same study. And we see that uh, methyl situation multiplier of the African-American population is significantly uh, smaller than uh, that of the general population, which implies that the effects of methyl cigarettes among African Americans are even worse. So uh, now Davis is going to talk about the uh, results of um, uh, this work. David, please. 
Thank you, Tui. Um, before I go to results, I would like to clarify a point that uh, uh, Tui uh, made uh, when she was talking about the overall cessation rates that we are using. We started um, computing the cessation rates uh, in 1998 using the data from uh, the 1980s and even before. But uh, uh, it, it is the methodology that we are using. We updated those cessation rates in 2016, and those are that we are using in the in the current uh, uh, work. Um, so I just wanted to make uh, this this point clear. Now let's go into uh, our results again, and uh, now we're going to present the uh, results of our study. And uh, right now we have a, this, this table with three panes uh, that uh, compare the results from the TIPSAC report to the current study. Uh, right now you see here in the, on the first column, uh, I'm sorry, on the first uh, row of each pane, uh, you have the uh, TIPSAC report uh, uh, numbers and uh, and the second line corresponds to our uh, current uh, estimation. Now, because the TIPSAC report, uh, you know, cover from 2010 to 2050, uh, we report the cumulative um, uh, excess death and uh, uh, smoking initiation and, uh, and cumulative life years. Uh, actually, we didn't uh, in, in the, or actually the, the TIPSAC report doesn't um, report the cumulative last year, but uh, uh, the, the report, uh, you know, shows the uh, cumulative excess initiation and the uh, excess premature death uh, starting uh, 2020 up to 2050. So it started, it started counting in 2010 and the first 10 years the, the accum accumulation, um, the cumulative numbers are starting here in 2010. So uh, for comparison, I am going to um, focus on the last uh, values, okay, at the end of uh, four years, and in, in our current study, 42 years, but, you know, it's uh, for, uh, you know, for, for um, um, our purposes, uh, we are gonna take it as a similar uh, time span. So what we see here is that the uh, number of excess uh, cumulative initiation that uh, was estimated in the uh, TIPSAC report in the span of 40 years has been revised down okay, from 9.1 million to 4.4 million. And, and this is, of course, uh, due to the uh, decrease in the, cessation, in the initiation rates that we have seen in the, over the last uh, uh, 10 years. Uh, the cumulative uh, excess premature death, uh, on the other hand, went from 327,000 reported in the TIPSAC report to 465,000. And... Uh, uh, even though there, uh, the, the prevalence of smoking is going down and uh, the uh, initiation uh, rates are, are, are going down and actually cessation is going up, we still have an increase in the number of death, uh, that the premature death due to mental, that we're computing uh, in, in, in the revised analysis is because the the parameters, uh, we learn more about the uh, impact of mental uh, on smoking initiation and cessation. And, uh, and, and such, we, we incorporated those uh, new estimates in our uh, computations and uh, uh, that, you know, that, that we obtained the, the, this result. Um, the cumulative life year loss, we don't have anything to compare because we, uh, the TIPSAC report didn't, didn't show that, but we estimate about 5.2 uh, million um, uh, cumulative uh, life year loss over um, 20, 2020, 2016. Okay. 
2018, 2016. Okay. Now, uh, th this table presents the same for the African American population, uh, and the patterns is uh, similar. So we have the TIPSAC uh, report uh, here reporting 1.7 uh, million um, excess accumulative excess initiation by 2050 and by 2060, by the end of 40 years or 42 years, the new estimates uh, are uh, down uh, by, uh, so, uh, and, and down up to uh, 1. Point million. So we went from 1.6 to, to 1 million. And, uh, uh, but the, the cumulative excess premature death that uh, reported, uh, that, that were reported to be about 66,000 uh, 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 in, in 40 years in the TIPSAC report is, is revised up to 134, 135,000 for the African Americans. Right? And the 1.7, here we reported 1.7 million uh, cumulative light year loss. Now, uh, this table is, uh, uh, you know, put in perspective the, uh, the, the disadvantage uh, that, uh, at which the African American population is, uh, is subject to uh, in, in terms of uh, mental smoking. So how disproportionate uh, the, the harm of mental uh, is, uh, is, you know, is, uh, uh, falls in, that, in, that, uh, in the African-American population. So we have here the cumulative excess premature death and the cumulative life year loss uh, for the African-American population as, as uh, uh, I showed before. Uh, but also in the second row, you have uh, what we call a hypothetical uh, low mental African-American population. That is, suppose that we take the same African-American population, the same number of people, uh, the same conditions uh, and so on, initial conditions, but uh, uh, we apply the same mental parameters at the um, overall population, at the general population. So. What if uh, we didn't have in the African-American population that high experimentation with mental uh, and, and uh, that high uh, mental, um, in, you know, mental smoking initiation and so on? So, but the, the parameters would be exactly the same as the um, uh, general population. So that would be the damage, that would be the impact of mental uh, on, on that hypothetical population. So from 134,000, um, uh, 135,000 uh, excess premature death, uh, we would have instead for, for about 44,000. And uh, cumulative life year loss is, pretty, is, is uh, um, the same uh, order of magnitude from 1.7 uh, million to uh, 412,000. Now, um, the, these graphs uh, also shows the um, burden that is uh, the mental puts in the, uh, in the African American population for comparison. So uh, here is the general population. This is the um, uh, mental related excess death by, by 2060. That's the, the same almost uh, um, almost uh, 4.5 uh, uh, million uh, that uh, I showed before. So suppose that this is the, this, this is the total, uh, you know, mental re related uh, smoking initiation. But the African-Americans uh, constitute, they, they are, African-Americans are about 12% of the population and uh, uh, it's 23, and they represent the 23%. They, they, uh, they take about 23% of the um, smoking initiation due to mental, or the excess smoking initiation due to mental, right? And uh, uh, this uh, also is striking um, when, when, the, when we compare the premature death by 2060. This is the total 
a premature death due to mental in the uh, general population. And uh, uh, if, if that is 100%, right, African Americans would be about uh, 29%, 30%. And uh, so let's say this is 100, this is about one third. And the low American, uh, low African American, uh, low mental African American population. So the the uh, hypothetical uh, low mental African American uh, population would be uh, about nine, ten, nine percent. So ten percent. So this uh, uh, a low mental African American population, uh, you know, uh, it's it would be one third of the uh, what what the African Americans are actually uh, receiving from mental, right? So uh, the uh, so essentially the uh, African Americans are uh, receiving three times uh, their uh, proportional uh, share of uh, of uh, you know premature death due to mental. Huh. Now, um, so. Um, it's succinctly, com compared to the the, the tip stack report, uh, the uh, updated estimates represent a fifty two percent decrease in the number of new smokers due to mental over the next forty years, uh, nine point one versus four point four million again due to the um, declining uh, smoking initiation, but a forty two percent increase in the mental re related premature death. Uh, because of new, because of, of a better um, uh, estimation or, or a new estimation of the the, the parameters that relate um, um, mental smoking and experimentation to cessation and initiation. And initiation. Um, for for the African uh, American population, we saw that uh, mental uh, harms African American uh, uh, disproportionately. The, the African American population is about one eighth of the U.S. population, while the number of premature death due to mental uh, is about one third in that population. One third, I'm sorry, one third of the of the of the value of the general population. And uh, if African Americans had the same mental profile, the same parameters, uh, um, uh, the, the 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 same. Uh, mental, uh, let's say, distribution as in the general population, uh, then uh, they, they, they would carry about one-tenth of the total mental burden, right, instead of one-third. So, um, the, the, the conclusion that, that we get out of, out of that is that uh, if uh, when the tip sack uh, report was uh, was submitted. The uh, you know the, the numbers uh, were considered to be uh, sufficiently um, problematic to to um, uh, to uh, earn a, a, this recommendation that uh, the removal of uh, uh, mental from the marketplace. Uh, would be beneficial uh, uh, for the for the public health, but uh, it, w with this re um, uh, update of all these parameters of this exercise, uh, this uh, uh, the the model um, that uh, that that appear in that report, the numbers are not any better. So we are looking at uh, the decreasing smoking initiation and number of new initiation, that's true. But the number of uh, premature death and the number of uh, life year uh, lost uh, consequently uh, is uh, even higher than, than before. So um, uh, so the, the, if, if the conclusion was this is quite risky before, that would be the same conclusion I would say now. And uh, so w what we can say uh, after looking at these studies, uh, despite the declines in, in smoking initiation and the overall prevalence during the last 10 years, menthol cigarettes still pose a serious public health risk, not only by increasing the population exposure to combustible cigarettes, but also by exacerbating health inequality as we saw and uh, uh, how disproportionately, um, uh, what, how what the disproportional harm 
uh, in the African American population. Um, so, uh, of course, any est uh, simulation studies um, will have certain uh, limitations or or things that we need to uh, be uh, careful about. The the results rely on, on several parameters uh, taken from the literature, and we have uh, tried to get uh, all the information about those parameters and uh, the um, and, and and verify the, the sources and so on. But uh, they are. Um, um, you know, the, there's uncertainty on those parameters associated to, to the uncertainty uh, uh, that, well, actually, the, the, the uncertainty on those parameters, uh, of course, generate uncertainty in, in our result. And the more, um, um, the more information we get about these parameters, the more, uh, I think, the, 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 uh, we, we are, will continue to um, to update our our um, analysis and uh, uh, get the, the most uh, um, uh, the, the the best information given the available data at at, at any point. Oh, so another thing is that the simulation, of course, is trying to uh, model a population and assume some population characteristics that. Uh, uh, in general, in aver on average, that they make sense, but uh, the you know uh, uh, individual uh, level uh, or a small group, they ha there might be uh, some heterogeneity in the population that wouldn't fit. Uh, although we think that the uh, you know the overall the, the, these these models right now capture the overall picture, and so the magnitude of the the results are in, in the ballpark. Uh, so that's a uh, another and final uh, comment is that you saw uh, all these the numbers in the tables that I presented, uh, 4.5 million, etc. cetera. Uh, I, I could have, and I probably uh, will in, in future presentations, just truncate all these uh, numbers and take uh, the, the uh, all the nuisances, all the uh, over, um, you know, a, a specification of these numbers, like seventy-one thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine, and so on. Um, we we are. Th this is a little bit of uh, uh, what we call false precision, right? So we did the computations as best as we could. Those are the numbers that we got. But we are, you know, we we are conscious that those numbers. Um, are in, in, in re, they represent they they convey a qualitative uh, um, analysis the qualitative sense of the ballpark or the or the magnitude of the problems it, it's, it's not that we are saying that this is the specific number uh, but we think that that uh, the the um, the effect of of, of mental uh, cigarettes on the population is about around the numbers, the, the magnitude that, that we present. So um, uh, we uh, have acknowledge again our um, funding, and uh, we thank the members of the Castor Data Core for providing a significant portion of the data uh, using the study. And uh, then we thank you, and uh, we will be happy to answer any questions you might have.